The way that I believe I can best steward what these legends have carried is I stoke that fire. I pour, I pour all myself on that fire. I put every log I can on that fire. I find out where's the fire burning. Yeah. I dive into that place because we are not about building big organization. We're about building a kingdom. Yeah. And at the center of it has to be a burning, raging bonfire. Bethel family, we are excited to continue the conversation today on legacy. Last time we had a conversation with some of our long-term senior leadership members here at Bethel and today I am joined by some of my fellow newer SLT members. I have Haley Braun, Richard Gordon and Ben Armstrong. Guys, we're going to have fun chatting today yeah. about this house. We just love Bethel. We love yes. Uh, what has been created here, what has been captured, how we've stewarded revival and the presence of God, of yeah. course. Amen. We love Amen. the presence of God mm -hmm. and that's what we love to camp around and yeah. celebrate here. Um, why don't you just share a little bit, maybe Ben, you have come from the Weaverville days yeah. and you've journeyed with this group of people longer than any of us. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about your time in Weaverville? Yeah, well, I, I would say it was a marking time, definitely. Um, I can remember we moved back when I was four years old. And I say back because my dad was raised in Weaverville. My grandparents were there for 75 years. So wow. um, we, we have a heritage there. And about four months later, this guy named Bill Johnson came in, <laughs> up and took over the little Assemblies of God church there. And, you know, growing up in that environment... I think I thought we were a typical church. This was just normal church. This is what we do. We pray for the sick. We hope they recover. The, the interesting thing, Taff, it was super funny because we would line everyone up in front, just like we do here at Bethel Church. And we'd say, hey, if you need healing in your body, if you need breakthrough in finances, breakthrough in relationship, our staff and elders, we're going to pray over you. We're going to believe for breakthrough. The only difference was no one got healed back then <laughs> and people got healed now. But one thing we never did was change, try and change or rewrite the Bible to be consistent with our narrative or our experience. And so we continued to pray and we, we'd have simple breakthroughs. You know, the little ones like Sister Sally's backache gets healed. And that's our one testimony. We'd share it over and over and over again on the prayer line for mm. a year before we got another breakthrough. Brother Bob's headaches gets healed. And that's two in two years. Mm. You know what we call that? A pattern. <laughs> and we were, we're like, okay, we, we've got a pattern going. We've yep. got a trend. We've got momentum. The snowball is rolling downhill. And we were learning. We were exploring. We, I don't think we really were in this vein of prophecy and some of the things we're in now. But we, we called it, oh, they got a word from the Lord. Mm. And then we had people coming in like Dick Mills, Dick Joyce, Iverna Tompkins, even guys like Mario Murillo, who were mm. known as an evangelist, but I learned more in the prophetic from that man than anyone wow. else that wow. came to that church because he had a vision for the future of people that was so akin to God's heart mm -hmm. and perspective that it just shifted everything, every way that I looked at cities, I looked at nations, I looked at individuals, I looked at my family. It just revamped everything. And we were in a little small mountain town, so it was kind of like research and development. We're just mm. exploring together and doing it in the context of family. Yeah. And so yeah. there was a bunch of that. I can remember growing up with the idea, we are meant to change the world. Yeah. Now I know Weaverville was less than 3,000 people, tiny little environment, but we had it in our hearts as young children. Our, it's our mandate to give away the gospel and mm. to impact the globe. So yeah. it was fun. Yeah, cool. It was unique. I love you, Ben. You have a unique experience coming from that environment, the local town. Yeah. 
us three, on the other hand, we've travelled internationally <laughs> to come here. Haley, why? What? What drew you here? Why did you come? She yeah. liked our cool accent. The cool. <laughs> it's coming for the accent. <laughs> it was to find your husband. Oh. <laughs> it's actually it was to the cut our kids' in. hair. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I mean, I came here 15 years ago, which at Bethel, that's like dog years. So <laughs> this is a really transitional environment. We're an apostolic yeah. sending house. So we send a lot of people. Um, but I came here 15 years ago because I saw Kim Walker Smith. Um, I was working as a hairstylist um, in a salon and it's some incredible women, a real mother in our city in, in terms yeah. of like the presence of God and church. She would bring her kids in to have their hair done. And one day she just slips this uh, Jesus Culture We Cry Out CD DVD. Now, Jesus Culture wasn't, nobody knew about them. Mm -hmm. Their stuff wasn't even being distributed. She had just come to visit Reading Mm -hmm. and she had come back with a couple things from Reading. And so she's like, you need to listen to this. And um, I was actually in the process of going to another ministry school. I was applying to, I, I, um, I didn't know what the prophetic was, but I was prophetic. So God yeah, would sure. be speaking to me and, and I was like, something's shifting. And so I was pursuing this other ministry school. And I remember watching Kim Walker Smith, uh, I just, I say, lose her mind. I mean, she was losing her mind on God, right? <laughs> yeah. She just had, mm. she had given it all. All her chips yeah. were in one, one, one section of the table and they were in God's. And uh, I remember pointing at the TV and being like that. That is what I want. And within a couple months, I was packing two suitcases and flying across to Redding, California. Didn't know what I was coming to. I thought I was coming. I remember reading History of Revivalists. So I thought I was going to like come to some kind of like seminary where we're going to study history, (laughs) which I wasn't actually very excited about. But I just knew that that girl had something I didn't have, Mm. uh, but something I wanted. And so that started a journey for me. And 15 years later, I'm here with three children, yeah. an amazing American husband. And and it hasn't just affected my life. You know, you, I look about, look at like I came, I came to Bethel for something I was hungry for. Yeah. Yeah. And I've watched it not just go down the family line into my kids, but I've watched it gone up to and touched my whole extended family and, and now lives of the nations as they come to our school. Yeah. Yeah, it's mm. great to see your whole family come and visit at different times. Your mom and dad were just here recently yeah. and mm. beaming at every moment of everything and even your experience and your teaching and the, the revelations and just hearing mom and dad right behind me and saying, wow, <laughs> oh my yeah. God, I've That's never special. heard that before. Wow. That's mm. incredible. You know, my dad, just real quick, my, my dad just called me and he's starting to preach out of the Methodist churches around Port Elizabeth. And uh, he's, you know, nearing his 70s, and he he decided to take a a list of words of knowledge to this Methodist church that they don't <laughs> operate in the prophetic or anything like that. He was teaching in the love language of words of affirmation, and he thought, well, what is more affirming than the prophetic? And so, mm-hmm. yeah. and he was like, my dad, who is not visibly shaken ever, he told me, he said, Haley, I was really nervous. And he ends up calling out these three words of knowledge, and people start getting touched by the Lord. and. You just think about like wow. coming from an environment, not people didn't not teach it to us because they didn't want to, they just didn't know. Mm. And I think about what this house has done for my life personally, but now what it's doing uh, to expand that, to press into these places, God is speaking. And he's speaking in a tiny little Methodist church in the middle of Port Elizabeth, South Africa, through a 70 year old man who's been preaching all of his life, who yeah. is grabbing a hold of something in God saying, I, it's not too late for me. I'm gonna continue yeah. to pioneer. and. I'm I'm so grateful for this house and yeah. what it's done for my family. Yeah. Yeah. Rich, you also came from South Africa. What were some of the key aspects of Bethel or what was happening here at Bethel that drew yeah. you to come? Um you know I have a very unique wife. She uh she is un- unreal. I don't think I've ever met anyone in my life like her. Mm-hmm. And she has this like Catherine Coleman anointing on her life and and we were married um, about three years, and I, it was always this time where I was like, I, I feel like part of my whole life's journey is to lay my life down so I could see her rise and shine. Mm. And there is something on her life that is that just the people we were around just didn't understand, didn't know how to steward. She would operate with the angelic. She would speak and like turn rooms upside down as this yeah. little twenty-year-old. Mm. And I, and I thought to myself. I wonder where, what could I do to see her like just be launched? Mm. 
And so I, I had a prophetic word by a prophet by the name of Julian Adams and oh, said we'd go to a, a new place, a, a new country, we'd be equipped there, refreshed there and launched from there. Come on. And in the moment I was like, I think this is going to be Redding, California. Five years before I had a dream that in five years time we'd move to a new city, a new country, I'd live with a lady. Uh, we'd live with a lady by the name of Pat. Uh, Libby would uh, uh, study theology. I'd worked as an engineer. So that fifth year came. We get the word from Julian. And in that moment, I'm like, the craziest idea would be me quitting my corporate engineering career and putting all my chips in to invest into this woman in the call of God in her life to come to Redding, California. And uh, so they said a green card would take a year and a half. We needed it in two months. We got it in two months. Uh, we came, Come on. Libby started BSSM. Uh, I worked as an engineer and we lived with a lady by the name of Pat. <laughs> and so it felt like a that destiny moment. Yeah, it felt like this destiny so moment where we came uh, here and it wasn't like just a good decision. It felt like it was written like for us to come here. But I think I'm just like everyone that comes here. Like I wanted the fire of God. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I watched my wife come home every day from BSSM and she would cry her eyes out and she would say, Rich, there's a place where what we always dreamt about, they actually do it here and they believe it here. Wow. Like from a woman in leadership to where leaders wouldn't be intimidated by like the gifts where no control, where there would be a freedom for the spirit to move. And she Thank would come you. home crying yeah. and saying, Rich, we've dreamt about this, but they actually do it here. And I remember sitting with her and, and she would cry and I was working as an engineer. And, and then after a while, I was like, maybe, maybe I could actually get healed of some wounds that I had. And maybe the same thing that was happening to my wife could happen to me. And so come on. I went part-time corporate. Uh, and I, I took my time and I did be a seminar. I was in your husband's revival group. Yes. And your husband was changed my life. Mm. Like sitting wow. in his office, I remember crying my eyes out, getting set free of fear of leadership wow. uh, in your on. husband's office. Mm. And this place is, it's go. changed me and my wife's life. Yeah. And like, hey, you know, we were two kids here yeah. mm. and uh, a home here. And this, this, this is home for us. Yeah. This is like this ground, the the soil of Redding, California. This is this is my kids will know this land. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we moved 14 years ago, so we're a year behind you, Haley. Uh, but we came with a two and a half year old and a 10 week old baby. Uh, wow. We packed up and left, and knowing that there was something more. We wanted the, the mm. more of God, mm -hmm. the supernatural right. that was happening here. That's right. We weren't seeing to the same extent anywhere else. And the stories that we were reading, the testimonies that we were hearing, the encounters that people were having, that's what drew us here. That's yeah. what yeah. called us here. And we're like, we have to, it's worth selling our home. It's worth picking up our 10 week old baby and our two, two and a half year old and moving internationally yeah. and leaving family, leaving mm. what is comfortable Oof. so that we can so be good. in the supernatural mm. so we can steward the presence of God in a greater degree and it was worth it it mm. was so worth it and it's it's a privilege now to carry this torch and to and say we fight for this this is what we believe in this is what we came here for mm. I say we came for the supernatural stayed for the culture yeah. yes. but it's the culture of how we relate to each other, but also the, this culture of supernatural, like this, yeah. what we believe, this high belief that he is still pouring out, he is still healing, he is still speaking, he is still prophesying and moving mountains. And that was why we came, like that's mm. why we picked up everything and left and we counted a cost. And I feel like we've learned something from our father, from the fathers of the house here oh, yeah. too about how to count the cost like they have paid a price yeah for what we are stepping into mm -hmm. um how do you how do we wrestle with that how do we grasp this we're inheriting something we we are living on their shoulders and running with them and being embraced by them and included by them in this journey how do we count the cost like what have we learned about counting the cost for this hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's provoking. I think even when you're speaking, I'm 
trying to hold back tears, you know, you <laughs> you hear the stories about what God has done and then you recognize what God is doing. And you recognize this moment in history where this baton is being extended to like, will we grab a hold of what the Lord has done and what he has spoken and take ownership? And to be honest, I think for me, I thought the cost would be different, but I think the, the cost for me has been like laying down truly like false humility or the fear of um, looking like I'm trying to reach for something when the, I just feel like the Lord is like, will you in yourself take responsibility um, for what I have called this house to? And it feels so weird, you know, you've been grafted in, you come here with two suitcases to sit in a room saying, God, I just wanna receive from these men and women and then you're brought in and and this fire begins to start stirring in you and provokes you to say, oh God, you're not looking for the extraordinary, you're just looking for the available. And I think, um, you know, the cost is sometimes embarrassing to talk about when I think about what I've received. And yet I do feel responsible. Like, am I willing to lay aside all the things that would tell me why I why it could be someone else. Mm. And will I grab a hold of this and take ownership and say, far be it from me that the next generation will not experience a greater move, a greater increase, like what our fathers have paid for that we won't build upon this. And so, you know, it's a tension for me every day. There's this element where I'm like, who am I to be saying, I'm gonna grab a hold of God. And then, then it's like, who am I to not say that? Yeah. And um, the mercy of God has found a house in Bethel, in Reading. The mercy of God has found a house, and it, it's found a house I don't think that was built on accolades or ability mm-hmm. or performance. Mm-hmm. It found an availability. And I think that yeah. is what I constantly feel like I have to wrestle through the limitations of my humanity to continue to say, God, I'm available, mm. and recognizing that He will fill my humanity with mm. His presence and He will make Jesus famous through the ordinary life. And I think this is why people come here. I think this is why we continue to build. This is why we continue to say yes, because we've recognized that God didn't grab hold of the exceptional. He just grabbed a hold of the available. And that's our job is to to remain available to Him. That's good. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I'd say the best preparation for worship isn't a practice, but it's a life surrendered. And, you know, the best way to count the cost i wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be to work harder but you know jesus didn't come redeem us so we could be workers but we would be worshipers mm. and so for me it's to be a laid down surrendered worship ab- abandonedly to the point of almost Rich. embarrassment yeah. yeah to the point of almost i am uh, almost to the point of embarrassment these guys did not get where they got because they were worrying about optics. They didn't get where they got because they were worrying about what is everyone thinking. Yeah. They were fixed and focused on the Lord and the assignments of the Lord. You hear these stories of Bill. I heard this one story from his old PA. He would say, there'd be times during the day, Bill would walk out of his office, open the door and say, surf's up and fling his hand. Yeah. And people would just get drunk in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and the offices would just become this drunken place of the Holy Ghost. You know, these legends, like legends to us, I I think sometimes in a hope to um, honor them, we don't pursue God to the point that it could cost us our reputation almost. Yeah, that's right. Like they, 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 they put like their selves on the line. Like put themselves on the line. And I'm a... You know, I'm, I'm, uh, they tease me, but I, yeah, I'm extreme. I love my wife with every piece of me. I love my Jesus with every bit of me. And I think to count the cost would to dive right in surrendered life, like to the point of like embarrassment. I'm mm, all in. Yeah. I'm not worried about my optics. Mm. I'm not worried about the optics of me on this team. I'm not worried about the optics of me. I, I think that is probably the sacrifice that would honor most the these legends in my life. Yeah. And I think the Lord, you know, um people 
people came from all over. It's crazy, like the number of people that watch, the number of people that come, but they didn't come for a strategic plan. They came for a fire. Mm -hmm. That's right. They came for a fire, a yep. burning, raging fire of God. And the way that I believe I can best steward what these legends have carried is I stoke that fire. I pour, I pour all myself on that fire. I put every log I can on that fire. I find out where's the fire burning. Yeah. I dive into that place. If it's not my department, I don't need my department to be the best department and best. If the fire's over there, I'm running, I'm jumping into the fire, so the children's good, department. I'm jumping in the fire at the, I'm jumping in the fire because we are not about building big organization. We're about building a kingdom. Yeah. And at the center of it has to be a burning, raging bonfire. Yes. So good. Yeah. It's yeah. good, Richie. I think there's a, uh, a price we pay initially to say yes to God, right? And we, yeah. we think we give it all. And then God shows us more of the kingdom and realizes in that moment when he shows us more of the kingdom, it's like you have to sign up again. Mm. And I don't think... Uh, this paying the price is a one-time price you pay. It is a sacrificial lifestyle that we have to step into continually. And if I don't continue to pay that price, I, I actually abdicate my authority to lead because I'm not willing to do the thing uh, that God needs in order to say, I can trust you. That's mm -hmm. good. Will you, will you give it all? And really it's, it's, it is a trust issue. You're talking about the fire of God. I can feel it burning amongst mm. us. In just the conversation, <laughs> my face burns. Yes. And uh, I want to get used to that, but I never want to get used to that. Yeah. I want to be familiar and in love with that, but never so used to it that you're not putting a demand for it all the time. And pursuing that. And I remember in school of ministry, we had a guy named David Hogan out, which, you know, we bring in incredible people who are hungry, who are wild in pursuit of God. And I was leading the day and David Hogan comes, you know, he's, he's done finishing and, and I'm supposed to close out his, his talk. And I start walking up the stage and then he looks at me, you know, those David Hogan <laughs> eyes, the yeah. wild eyes, like, Oh, Lord of the dance, something is about to happen. <laughs> and he looks at me fierce and he grabs me by the face and he pulls me in close and begins to whisper things in my ear and I can feel the fire of God just welling wow. up inside of me. And there's moments like that where in all honesty, you can put up a boundary for the presence and say, only this far will I go. Mm. Yes. And I sat there in that moment and I remembered some weird revival quotes like I would light myself on fire and people would come and watch me burn. And I thought, Lord, I don't want to light myself on fire and everyone watch me. I want to light, if I light myself on fire right now, I want them to jump into the fire with mm. me. Come on. Mm. This better be everyone. And I just like, I have, I, this is on film. This is, but I feel my face about to turn inside out. And about, I feel like the veins popping in my <laughs> neck and my eyelids are turning. And I'm like, I'm just going to go with it. And, it. and I went and then all of a sudden, the students in school, a majority of the students, at least three quarters of them, rush the stage. And it's like a bonfire of God's goodness. Mm -hmm. They tackle me. Mm -hmm. We're falling off. There's piles screaming. The Thank power God. of God hits the place. And I remember laying in there just being melted by the, the fire of God and begin to sit there and I might realize, okay, the fire's going. It's not about me anymore. I need mm -hmm. to crawl out of here. Mm -hmm. So I crawled out and I crawled under the chairs and just had a moment with God. And I, I think we need to be willing, like you said, to, to look crazy, not be worried about the optics, continue to pay another price. Because just when you paid a price, God invites us into more. And uh, I think that's, especially the longer we're in this, the, the more temptation there might be 
to salvage someone's rep- reputation, mm-hmm. even our fathers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In a sense of honor or yes. a sense of duty. But our honor and duty is to actually go places they've never been before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not just to walk the same trails they walked over and over again. Yes. That, uh, oh, I've got to build a path and we've mm-hmm. got to do that. And that means mm-hmm. there, so there's going to be some pain in that. There's well, going to be yeah. some effort. There's going to be some work in there. Not because God wants to cause pain, but if you're pioneering, right? Yeah. Thorns, thistles, you're pioneering a new trail, you're going to cut. There's blood, sweat, and tears. But when we do it in family, in the yes. context of this, all of a sudden, when Taff, you're in pain, I'm in pain. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, when when we're going through it, we're like, come on, we got this. Yeah. You are made for this. Yeah. And we begin to lift each other up. And so we're not just paying an individual price. We're paying it as a family. We're paying it as a community. And it's easier to pay that price when you're not alone. Mm. Yeah, that's so right. But I'll pay it even if I'm alone too. Mm. Yeah. That's how we got to be. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I think we feel the weight of the responsibility. Mm-hmm. It's like we've been... We're in this moment of stewarding what is here, but we're also hungry for the new thing. And we don't want to just sit in the past. We want to yeah. honor the past, but also step into what the Lord is doing yeah. in the future as well. Because he's not finished yet and his presence is forever. And I think we feel that weight of responsibility. How do we carry and honor the past, but also step into preparing ourselves? And you guys have talked about yeah stewarding the fire within our own lives and that is the ultimate responsibility Mm. that we have is to steward our own fire and our own devotion to the lord but we also have a responsibility Mm. for a movement and for what the lord wants to do how do we how do we balance this yeah um i was talking to paul manoring yesterday and he said something profound to me and i've been chewing on it he said when paul the apostle presented the gospel in the epistles, he referenced the Old Testament consistently to present the new. Mm. And when Jesus presented the new, he referenced the Old Testament to present the new. And even in the presentation of, oh, I feel the anointing. Mm. In the presentation of the new covenant, there's this exactly what you're talking about. There's this holding on to we're not forgetting yeah. there's this holding on this is not just a new thing this is a fulfillment yeah. Yeah, this is good. a fulfillment yeah. this is a fulfillment of the father's promise yes. yeah and there that's my, in my heart i'm thinking what were the promises given to this house i want to be part of the fulfillment of the promises there's prophetic words over this house that have not been walked into fullness yet yeah mm. yeah but in that same way, the presentation. And then, you know, through my, my journey of the, um, the movements I was part of before and, uh, and observations of transition, I often see fathers uh, feel like they can't coexist with sons and daughters. Mm-hmm. They feel like if they're fully themselves, they'll squash a son and daughter. And it gets to this struggle where essentially someone has to go. Someone has to, like, lay down. Someone mm-hmm. has to, and I'm craving for a, a, a place where we can walk hand in hand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because a father and a mother bring wisdom and a younger generation brings zeal. Yeah. But what would it look like to have wisdom and zeal together? Yeah. Like, I don't want just zeal. It's great. Rich, you can yeah. hear me. I'm like, I'm going to dive in the fire. I've, <laughs> yeah. I've got zeal. I've got this yeah. zeal for the Lord's house. Not yeah. that fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but there's, you know, but there's this wisdom that it's untouchable. I mean, what's on Bill's laugh? Mm-hmm. Like, there's an apostolic grace for wisdom on his life. It's un- like I've never met anyone like it. Mm-hmm. And how can we walk together? Where we don't we don't diminish the zeal, yeah, but we don't devalue the wisdom. That's and if right. how can we hold it together? It's great. And I don't know the answer, but I just I'm inspired by the humility of the leadership team mm. that we part of. Yeah, I, I, me and my wife are the the youngest or the the what would you say the newest members to the team, mm-hmm. and the humility of the whole team, including those that have been there longer. I'm like, wow, just 
Yeah. I think it must come from wisdom. Yeah. Wisdom and humility. Yeah. Ben, can you talk a little bit about your transition as a son of the house mm-hmm. to becoming a father of the house? And you are a father. How, how have you navigated dad. that? Like, how has that transition been for you? Oh, super easy. It was uh, super smooth. And, <laughs> and, 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 you know, it just was like, just it was right just in. natural, yeah. you know. Um, no, I think that that, that was, uh, I, I feel like myself, I, I'm 50 years old now, just turned 50. And I do feel like I'm a bridge generation a little bit. I'm I'm in between the the older generation and that younger generation who are coming up in in leadership, and uh, the I we're all going to be a bridge generation at one point in our life. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll all hit that spot. But the interesting part of a season of that is you've got to be willing to be walked on, and so there's there's a little bit a bridge gets walked on, driven on. Right? It's it's actually there to support. Yeah the transition of things. And if we get really prideful and arrogant, we just get frustrated uh, even in the baton handoff because we're like, hey, get let go of it, you know, or we fight that thing. But we've got to learn that tension that Richie's talking about is the value for generations yes. and the value for history. One nice thing on my life is one of my favorite things is this thing called context. Yes. And I'm a learner. And so I love history and I love to learn the benefits from our past and the mistakes from our past and hopefully make some decisions that would transition us. And I I think one of my helps in transition was uh, as a young prophetic guy, I was pretty arrogant. I think young prophetic people have a tendency to just because they're able to see the future, get really frustrated with everyone else who's slow to get there. Mm. And so we're we're so living in the future that we don't have patience for people's process. Mm. And one of the biggest transitions came when I was invited to be a revival group pastor. Oh, my first two years, I was just trying to fix people's problems, tell them everything about their lives and the solution for it. And then I began to realize, oh, anytime there was opposition to what I said, people would reject it because they didn't choose it. It wasn't originated from them. And I needed to fall in love with people's process. Mm. And I needed to be patient. And I needed to trust God. I was trusting more my ability to see future Mm. and make things happen in people's life than see the future and breadcrumb people into that because I know they're powerful, they're anointed. And and really, that was that was a big transition season. Seven years of, of pastoring taught me to fall in love with people and their process. And then then people would come back to me and say, don't you see this about their life? Or, or I thought you were prophetic. And I'm like, of course I see this. But God was patient with me mm. and my process. Don't you think he's working on that? I think he's working on that. And we can trust them. Yeah. And so that shifted a bunch. When I became... My goal at a young, as a young man was to become the most positive person in a room. Wow. And uh, I wanted to believe in people. And that automatically gave me a heart of a father or a mother, you know. Um, and it, it shifted. And I, it's, it's a healthy thing for all of us to go through and grapple with that. And I think even our, our older senior leaders who are now transitioning from fathers and mothers into grandfathers and grandmothers are actually having another historic shift. These are historic seasons of our life. And and it, when we're first stepping into it, maybe there's a little, res- I'm, I'm, I'm still young. I'm not a dad. What are you talking about? You know, and some sometimes we reject those, but we need to actually honor some of those titles and then ask the question, God, what does that look like yeah, in good, your hands? Yeah. And what does that look like? to take it to another level. My dad did a good job with me. He was a great dad, very loving. But there are some things that I get to take to another level with my own children. I think we all get to do that. And that's Mm -hmm. part of the Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, kind of this 
legacy of the generations that hopefully we would build upon, not have to relearn everything. Mm. Great. Yeah. I think the fathers and mothers of this house that have been here long term are so invested in us being fathers and mothers that it's Mm -hmm. such a beautiful journey together. And I love that they're invested in us. They're pouring into us and calling us higher and wanting us to step into all that God's placed on our lives. Yeah. Haley, where are you seeing God move at the moment around Bethel? I know you're also traveling yeah. as well. Mm. Like, Where are you seeing the spirit moving? Mm. What are you seeing the Lord is doing at the moment? Yeah, it's so interesting. Even you're talking about like holding on to the old while moving into the new yeah. and then travel and all this. Like there's this. Uh, okay, so I'm obviously prophetic, so I do have this feeling of when God is doing new things or He's highlighting things in seasons. But in the great big broad concept of the story of the Ancient of Days, it begins with Him creating a garden that He would rest and walk with His people. Mm. And uh, obviously people reject that, they reject God's way. And there's this journey of the restoration that God can be with His people Mm. and actually eventually build his people up into his likeness, into his beauty, and he can come again and restore everything that was lost. And uh, part of our role as believers right now is to bring the restoration of what Jesus has already paid for. And so as much as there's new things happening, I feel like God's been doing the same thing for a long time. Mm. He has been looking for a resting place that he can bring his kingdom to, and he can make his people like Jesus. And um, I feel like... The fire started in Leviticus. It came out of the presence of God. It lit the altar. The fire came out of the presence of God and lit the apostles in Acts 2. And the fire continues to burn in the church. We're not trying to start a new fire. We are are remembering that there has been a fire that started in the Lord. And he is the high priest. And he's all he's looking for is this resting place. And, you know, even when you talk about embracing the old and the new. And sometimes I can make it complicated, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I, I... Every time it gets complicated, I just remember, God, the future of Bethel Church isn't about me figuring out this grand master plan. It is me Mm -hmm. continuing to say, yes, that you are looking for a resting place. And when the presence of God rests on a life, that life is completely transformed. You know, Samuel Chadwick talks about the security of the soul is found in its fire. Mm -hmm. Like when the soul is aflame with the power of God, our soul is secure. Mm -hmm. And when it isn't set aflame by the power of God and there's and it's fire, our soul is insecure. And um and so for me, what I'm seeing the Lord do around the world is the same thing He's doing to me. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing He's doing here. He's looking for a people who want to say, set me ablaze by the power of your spirit. Lord, I don't want anything else. I don't, I I love strategy, but God, I don't need a new strategy. I need to learn how to live in your strategy, which is how do I become fully given to you? Mm -hmm. And I discovered how a few years ago, which is surrender. Not by my striving, not by my trying, but giving it all continuously and daily. And uh, in School of Ministry yesterday, it was the second week of first year, brand new students coming in, all different cultures, environments, nations coming into this room. And I got up to share um, the testimony of how the Lord encountered me nearly four years ago. And we got to a point in the story where... Um, the Holy Spirit started resting on me in a very like familiar way. Mm-hmm. And you just like recognize, like I'm up here teaching and here you are coming to me. And as he started resting, as I'm sharing this story, the whole room shifted and you see these students who are brand new to our environment start running mm. to the is. front. They start running and And it just like calibrates you again that all he's looking for is a resting place. And when we don't resist him, when we (laughs) don't look past him, when we're on in a hurry to get to another thing, but he is the one thing. And, you know, Bill Johnson said many years ago, God, if you touch me, Mm. I will never change the subject. And I think my greatest desire in traveling to the nations and leading school of ministry and what it means to carry the baton with as all of us in this house is God. I remember what my dad said. He said, if you touch me, I'll never change the subject. So yeah. Lord, I'm not not gonna change the subject. It is your presence that transforms life. Yeah. And it is the life transformed by your presence that changes the world. Yeah. And I think that's where I, that's what I see God doing today again, yeah. 
it's a it maybe is an, a new vernacular, like a slightly different language. Maybe we're speaking to a different generation who's dealing with different things. But ultimately, yeah. we're all just trying to find the the communication, the way of saying, let's give our all to mm -hmm. God so that we can become his resting place. Yeah. So That's his fire great. can burn in the church yeah. as he How? desires. Yeah. Mm. And I love our, our church is is bigger than just Reading too. Like we have a whole movement around <laughs> yeah. the world. We oh, have yeah. all our Vessel Leaders Network, pastors and leaders and friends and family of yeah. all of us that are burning as well. Like the fire isn't just in Reading. The fire mm. is all over the earth and he is moving uh, beyond the four walls of the church even. Yeah. Yeah. Like he is on the move. Uh, Richie, you've traveled a bit as well. Can you tell us a story maybe of what is happening in some of the places that you've traveled? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> yeah, I, this is an apostolic house. Yes. Yeah. So a story can tell a thousand words. Mm. So I'll tell some stories, but my heart, if anyone's watching, that this would ignite your heart yes. that uh, you that this house is called to be apostolic. Mm. But actually, I'd be, we are a people that are apostolic. Thank you. That we're called not to just think inward how can we build inward but how can we touch outward um yeah so i'm actually going to a, this this friend of mine in hawaii i'm going on friday again oh, awesome. but uh, i was sitting with him while i was in honolulu and uh, i got invited to a pastor's lunch i had lunch with him and the holy spirit just whispered to me this is your most important meeting you'll do on the island. I had a series wow. of meetings I was doing, but this was maybe, it was probably like just a few more people than this. And this one guy starts to speak and I feel the God just drawing a connection. And you know, when there's a connection, a God connection, it's way bigger than your skills or ability or anointing. So he calls me a few months later and says, hey, would you come and would you introduce to my church, the move of the Holy Spirit, the miraculous, would you come and do that? And uh, I said, yeah, of course, I'd love to. And then he's like, I'm jumping a call and they want, they want to do it at their Christmas service, <laughs> which is like the Super Bowl for, you know, yeah. invite all your friends, invite all your family, let's, you know, we'll, we'll present our best message and hope you come back type of thing. So I was like, are you guys sure that you want me to come? <laughs> During this time, Do you know me. <laughs> yeah. And I said to them, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the wilder guys from one of the wilder churches, and this is the first time yeah. you're introducing them. And he's like, No, I felt the Lord. This is an amazing man. He he runs a, a one of the largest tech companies on the island too, and he was on the treadmill running, and the Lord spoke to him, invite him. It has to be Christmas service. Our church is going to get introduced to the Holy Spirit. Oh. So he was adamant, <laughs> adamant. Because the Lord is building His church. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I, like yes. I'm on, I'm, I'm on, I'm on this interview. But I, I was a little kid in South Africa, broken story, but God touched me, and I'm, yeah. So yeah, I go, and they invite me out. They gave me 15 minutes to introduce the Wait, church. Say that again. Yeah. <laughs> 50? No, 15. That's right. They yeah. said if you could introduce them to the move of the spirits, the miraculous, and the power of God, and you have 15 minutes to do it. So I burst out laughing, and <laughs> they didn't know why I was laughing. And they said, what do you need? I said, I need more time. They went away. They prayed. And they said I could have 20 minutes. So I was like, OK, here we go. Nice. So I get there. I did their ministry team uh, meeting. And uh, so there was about 60 people at their ministry team meeting. And I said to them, they were going to train them on how to pray for people. And uh, so they said, I said to them, I don't think you need to be trained exactly on what to do. You need an encounter with God if you are to distribute an encounter with God. That's you need right. a touch from heaven come if on. you are trusting that people come to you and you pray for them that they would get a touch from heaven. So we started mm. praying and people just started getting radically touched. But I didn't know this was like the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, whoa, it's turned into a wild meeting and... Uh, and so you can imagine the pastors are so excited and so nervous for the Christmas service. The next day we driving there and it's pouring with rain and the, I'm driving with the main guy and he's calling and he's canceling the petting zoo, he's canceling the pony rides, he's canceling the jumping castle because they had a carnival set up. Mm -hmm. That's why I had 
you know, 15 minutes. Jumping Castle, Bounce House. Bounce yeah. House. All those Americans, American yeah. <laughs> And, uh, I didn't even pick it. <laughs> he turns, it's, a it's a castle that jumps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he turns to me and says, I think you'll have more time. So we get there and uh, they, they do the message and the worship. And then he comes up with faith. He says, church, today's a new day. Mm. And uh, today I've been praying and I felt I'm, we're supposed to introduce you to the move of the Holy Spirit, the power and the miraculous. And we have a guy from Bethel Church who we've invited to help us do that. Would you welcome Richard? So I'm like, hi everyone. <laughs> and I got some people up that had had their first encounter the day before, very well respected people in the community. They shared. I shared for a bit on the miraculous and the power. First person I pray for, they fall out under the power of God. And the auditorium of a thousand people go, <gasps> and so uh, I said, okay, here we go. And I said, if you want to touch from God, if you need a miracle in your body, I want you to rush the front. This church had never done rush the front ministry. So with a thousand people in the room, the leader said to me, expect maybe a hundred because they're not used to this. <laughs> 700 people rushed wow. the front, hungry for a touch from God, believing that they could get Come healed on. in their body. And for the next three plus hours, we just saw people get touched for their first time, miracles, a tumor dissolves, wow. like just boom, boom, boom. And for three hours, the local body Thank and you, me God. are praying for people. Wow. Yeah, The local body seeing miracles. Yeah. That's right. That's exactly. The next week they asked me, what do we do? Like, because I believe an apostolic house doesn't go in and just have a boom. They go in a lot of fire and that fire continues yeah. and is stewarded right. by the local community. And then what do we do? I said, well, where did you feel the anointing? They said, when people rushed the front, when the locals prayed, and when we shared testimonies. So the next service, all they did was share testimonies, um, and then they created space for people to rush the front and pray. And that pastors saw their first miracles through their hands. Thanks, God. And wow. the service that usually is an hour went for another three to four hours. Come on. It's part of my anointing. The services go longer. I'm just <laughs> joking. <laughs> yeah. I have the reverb. <laughs> God's not limited by time. I'm just telling But you. I'm That's just right. so pumped. We, we, I'm going back this weekend to That's be with my come friends on. now. Yeah. They, these That's are my so friends. Exciting. We're doing Kingdom Together. Yeah. We building together, yeah. and so yeah, I, I, it's such a privilege yes. to represent yeah. this house. Yeah, his kingdom is advancing yes. all across the earth. I love yeah. Richard how God actually used your journey. It, it, Bill likes to say this: God wastes nothing. Yes, and it, how God used your journey and value for academia. Yes, and your value for learning to open a door for something that can only be learned through experience, not just head knowledge. Yeah. And so it's so it, cool. you've stewarded that really, really well, That's and it's good. opened a You're ton of doors. Ben's yeah. the best. He's like my cheerleader, and I, he's hey, like a dad. Love, I love doing He's like a dad to me. You. I love it's Ben. <laughs> As we bring this to a close, in the, la in the last minute, give me 20 seconds. What are you most hopeful for for the future? Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just revival. revival, yes. Yeah. No, I mean, I was just thinking as we're talking, I'm probably going to butcher answering your question. I'm like, this is why we have to build. Yeah. This is why, like, we have to continue to be a house that is laying it all down, surrendering everything, because what I'm most looking forward to is seeing God ignite. Not, when we say the nations, it's too broad. It's it paints to no ignite the lives of individuals. Yeah, I'm on like I I've seen what it looks like for an individual to give it all and to burn, and what happens to the people around them. What happens to environments where they give you 15 minutes? They don't even have a, a grid for what what it means. They just know they need it. This is this is why we have to. You know, people say the church isn't gathering anymore. I just want to tell you, I don't know what we're going to do if the church doesn't gather because it is in the gathering that we are. Mm -hmm. Minded. We are true. on the same journey. Yeah. The same journey is to be lit ablaze by the presence and the power and the fire of the Spirit that we would become oh. ignition points, catalysts. We're not just coming to church to eat fruit and have a good day. We're there to mine out seed from the fruit we're eating, that we ourselves plant that seed in the soil of our lives and we become propagators of the very thing God has done in us. It begins to go around the world, not for the sake of our name, not for the sake of fame, yes. not for the sake of followers, or yes. ministries, yes. Uh, really, that, that is not going to transform the world. What will transform the world 
is people who are willing to host the glory of God and make Jesus famous. Yeah. This is why we exist. Yeah. This is what I'm excited about, because when Jesus is lifted high, all men will come to him. Yes. And that is when the world will start looking like the kingdom of God. Yeah. And that's what he paid for, and that is that is what we must do. Yeah, mm. very wow. good. That's powerful. I, I, I think right when you said that, that question of like, hey, what are you most looking forward to right now in the body of Christ or around the world and in this whole thing called revival? I, I instantly went back to um, about a week and a half ago, My I got to bring my son to Chile. Uh, yeah. And it was such an incredible time. But our last two days, we were in Santiago uh, visiting one of the largest churches in the nation if not the largest church, and they're in the middle of a building project, much like what we're doing right now. And it's not about a building. It's actually about reaching people, impacting lives. But they're doing this in the heart of legacy. And this was the the son and daughter-in-law that I was walking through with and, and the father, and they're doing it together. And I'm like, this is us. This is it. And they, they in three months, did a 5,000-seat sanctuary. And they're wow. building another 9,000 seat sanctuary. And the impact on my son, he said, Dad, I've never seen anything like this. This is incredible. This is so inspiring. I am burning inside. This is, there's something about this. And there's something about actually getting a God vision that changes everything in your life. And I, I think a God vision shows people something way beyond themselves but it actually gives them hope that I could be a part of that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and in God's sovereignty, and his love for my son, he shows him a big vision. Mm. He shows him more of the kingdom. And I think of those things, and God wants to give us the fullness of the kingdom. That's right. I, I mean, really, what is it? Is he trying to get us to do something? No, he's trying to get us to be with someone, mm -hmm. be with him. And I think of all the gifts that he gives us and lavish out on us in this season, we're going to see more and more of the gifts of God arise in the church and, and be represented really well. But the ultimate thing is to actually get the one behind the gift. It's the giver mm -hmm. of the gift. And I want to see my family get the fullness of that. Mm -hmm. I want to see that in every family, every church we go to, every place we invest in. It is. It's 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 bigger and smaller than just nations, right? It's like, no, these are real people that God is in love with. And so I, I think that's a little bit right now where where I'm burning. Mm. Yeah. Um I think uh, God's looking for a people that he can trust his glory with. Yeah. And uh, I just, I wouldn't be arrogant to say like, oh, that's going to be us, but I'd say my hope is, I hope that we would be humble, yes. that we would walk yes. in humility and we wouldn't try to touch it and claim it, mm -hmm. but we'd be able to walk and we'd be able to be a place, like Kaylee was talking about, a resting place. Mm. We'd be a place where we could be safe hands for the glory of God. Oh, okay. That'd be the dream. That is, that's the dream. Yeah. Like with seven-year-olds, with five-year-olds, with 10-year-olds, just that the glory would be there. Yeah. And uh, in our schools. Hundred-year-olds. Hundred to the grannies. The grannies. <laughs> You're crazy. The guy loves the grannies. <laughs> that, that dream is that we'd be safe hands for the glory. Yeah. Oh, yes, God. Oh, we say yes to that. What about you, Taff? I am, I'm excited that God is so big that we haven't seen all of him yet. He's so multifaceted, multifaceted, yeah. that there is more to him to discover. And this God that is so big is so intimate. Ooh. And that he can be so big, so new, so fresh to each one of us every moment of every day that we can know him that intimately. I'm excited to see the more of God. Like, yeah. what does it look mm. like? What what is possible? Like that's my question is always what is possible? Anything's possible. What is possible? What could it look yeah. like? And how does what does it look like to dream with God and wow. see him move in mm. 
supernatural ways that we haven't even dreamt of or conceived yet. Yeah. Like he is so big that we try and box him into, oh, he just, he's the laughing God, he's the oil, he's the, you know, roll around on the floor. But no, there's more. There's so much more. Yeah. And I want I want all of that, but I want to see all these other sides of God and all the other aspects of the Father that we are yet to discover yet. And that's the beauty of this journey with him. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Blow our minds, Jesus. Oh, I love being on this journey so with beautiful. you guys. Thank you for stewarding revival and yeah. stewarding the presence of God. Um, oh. It's just, it's an honor to do this with you. And thanks for sharing your journeys today and your heart for revival. Okay. That's really what a privilege. Burns. It's been amazing. <laughs> yeah. What a privilege. Well, Bethel family, we just pray that you burn with the same passion for revival and presence of God and that you right now, wherever you're watching this, would just encounter the love of God, encounter the fire of God that we've been talking about. Uh, This is for you. He is for you. He is with you. And we just believe that greater things are ahead. Greater things are yet to come. Yes, Lord. And we have you in mind as we seek the Lord as well. So thanks for joining us today. Please join us next time as we continue this conversation on legacy. We love you all. Thanks again. I just felt like there's an oh. anointing here that, you know, like I when agree. you export, you don't want to export information. You want to export anointing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, it's the anointing. And there's, it feels like there's an anointing here. And so maybe I'm I just like... Why not? We just start praying together and just. I agree. Just Thank have you. it rolling and just, Please. just yeah. Thank you, God. Thanks. And it would be use it or don't. It's just. I love this. Yeah. I was about to say we should oh, pray. So. Yeah. 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 Glory. Thanks. Oh God, we recognize, Lord, that um, we aren't entitled to a move of God, but it certainly is meant to be our inheritance. God, I pray that you would, that you would do a work in us, God. I thank you for my friends, God. I thank you that we're not doing this as individuals, but we're doing this as a family. And Lord, I do. I pray that you, by your mercy, would come and mold us and make us, God. You say that if you build, that you will build your church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Lord, I thank you. You are building your church. I thank you for Bethel, the house of God, the gate Mm. of heaven. Lord, I pray, God, that you would mold us and make us as a house of God and a gate of heaven, Lord. God, this building that you are, you have spoken, you say that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, the rhema, the revelatory, Mm. the breathed word of Mm. the Father. You have spoken and Lord, we attach our faith, God, to this Mm. word and we say, Lord, you are calling people to come. You are calling people, God, heaven. I was thinking how heaven is a party. Heaven is a (laughs) gathering. Heaven is a worship meeting that never ends. It's a place where all perspective, is restored, Lord. We thank you that you are building a house where perspective is restored, where the eternal perspective can be encountered and experienced that would shape the way we look at our Mm. lives. God, I pray that this building will be a container of your glory that will shape the perspective of so many lives where the work that we are called to do would not be toil, but it would be worship because it is in your presence. Mm. Oh, God, that you would raise us up, Lord, as a signpost that the kingdom is not just coming, but the kingdom is at hand. That we will be those who would reach out and grab God, not out of entitlement, but out of deep desire and hunger because we are poor, but we also know that you are available. Oh, Holy Spirit, would you come? Would you come and would you fill and would you touch and would you mold and would you set ablaze by the power of your spirit like you did Mm. in Acts, God? Would you encounter us again, God? Yes, God. (laughs) Give us a a tenacity, God, to never change the subject. Yes. Mm. We're not looking to change the subject. We're looking to remain vigilant, God, fixed Mm. upon you, Jesus. It is your presence that we live for. Thank you, God.
Yeah, even as Haley is praying, um, God gave me a word of knowledge. Just, I, I feel this. Uh, someone had actually severe, severe trauma on the right side of their neck and shoulder. It actually tore all the muscles in the neck and back into the back shoulder blade, all across the shoulder, even into the chest. And it's actually crippled the way you 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 sit and you function. And it's actually messed with your face, even uh, the muscles in your face. And even uh, a, the constriction, constriction in your breathing. And this has been actually a long term. It's been over two years you've had this, this, uh, this condition. And I see God laying his hand on you right now. Thank you. God. And the spirit of God coming through. And actually, I can feel the hand. It's not on this, on this right side. His hand is on your left shoulder. And he's actually healing right now. He's healing broken and mm. severed relationships and places where um, there was there was pain to where it was almost like, God, I can never forgive that thing. And God's giving you a new grace Thank to forgive. You, and as he does, there, you, you, there it goes. Your neck is just coming straight wow. and there's healing coming throughout. And there's a warmth coming through uh, your your right side all through your body and it's almost as if that sharp pain in the right hand side of your chest just lift like it just got pulled out something that was trying to sever uh your ability to connect with god has just been restored and here's what's crazy it it, it even in your nose something messed up in your smell in your ability to smell and your ability to breathe through your nose but all that's being restored and your nose is being restored as well mm -hmm. take a deep breath of the holy spirit hmm. oh there it goes Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Ben, when you said the word forgive, I just felt mm -hmm. like there was something on that, that there's yeah. so much unforgiveness that is causing bitterness and rife and strife in families and conflict. And I mean, it's probably pretty evident around the world, but we're talking about this communion revival mm -hmm. as well. And I just feel like there is about to be an outpouring of forgiveness where oh, there's just going to be a flood, uh, like the mercy of God is going to fill yes. people's hearts yes. and their minds and that they're going to start forgiving people, that we're going to step Thank into, you, you know, communion, the cross is all about forgiveness. Like we are forgiven yes. as well as healed, you know, Thank you. but it's all about us being forgiven for our sins. And I just feel like that there's a a movement of forgiveness that is coming Thank across the world Spirit. right now. Yeah. We just Come declare on. today is the day of forgiveness, that hearts would melt, hearts would soften, that uh, walls would come down in relationships, that there would be a movement where people are just reaching out to one another, that we would see each other as you see uh, each other, God, that we would see with your eyes and not uh, the eyes of hurt yeah. or misunderstanding yeah. or judgment, but God, that there would be a forgiveness in our hearts and our minds yeah. that would break these barriers and break open the wells of of connection and communion and uh, community and family. Let family be strong again. We yeah. declare it across the world. Let family be strong yes, again. Lord. Let family be the place yes, where your, your spirit yes, pours God. out, where bonds are formed, yeah. where covenant is formed yes, again, God. where covenant has been broken. Sure. We say covenant be formed again in the yeah. name of Jesus. Yes, Thank you. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. I keep seeing a picture of the building but it's the people inside the building That's that right. are anointed. Mm. And I see a fire coming upon people. In the old, he anointed a building. And in the new covenant, he anoints a people. Yeah. Yeah. And right. so, God, I thank you. You haven't anointed a vision statement. You haven't anointed a mission statement. You haven't anointed a structure, but you've anointed a people. Mm. And God, I thank you that people would walk in and there would be a glory that would touch a people, Thanks. God. I thank you that you're going to draw people from the nations, God, from yeah. Brazil, God. You're going to draw people thank from you, Argentina yes. and Chile, God, oh, yeah. and Australia thank and you, South Lord. Africa and Europe thank and across you, God. America, God. Oh, and there's going to be a drawing because there's a fire that you want to put upon a 
other people to send them out. I thank you for the call of God to be an apostolic house, a sending house where John the Baptist baptized with water, natural elements, but Jesus came to baptize with fire. And God, I thank you, Jesus, that there'd be an anointing of fire upon people that would be sent out, that would baptize not with natural substance, but with a fire that would transform environments and businesses and education environments and the arts and industry, Lord God. And we thank you, Jesus. It's bigger than a church. It's a movement of people on fire being sent out into the workplace, being sent out into the nations, Lord God. I thank you, Jesus, that there's going to be a people that gets set a lot on fire. I'm thinking of Gen Z and I'm thinking of Gen Alpha. That's the, I think it's like 14 and under. And I just see these young people like six years old, seven year olds, 12 year olds, 14 year olds under the power of God, getting set a light, getting a call of God to be a minister, to getting a call of God to be a prophet, getting a call of God to be an evangelist at a young age. And I see the Lord lighting fires upon a Gen Z and a Gen Alpha generation. God, I ask God, even for for that generation, God, I ask that there be a grace given to this house to steward, to steward just uh, encounters for that generation, God. I thank you what you did through Jesus culture. I yes, thank you what Lord. you're doing yeah. through God. Bethel music. Yes, Lord. God, you called us to be worshipers, not workers. Yes, yes, and God, I thank you for a worship movement thank you, that would Lord. be a continue and uh, come through this house, a sound that would continue to yeah, come through this house. Yes. that would light yes. revival, light hearts and souls that don't know you, light souls thank that you, don't God. know you, God. I think this is a house of worship. This is a house of presence. This is a house house of signs and wonders and miracles where cancer would be cured and cancer would be canceled where people would walk in with broken arms and a broken piece in their body and the miraculous Jesus this king of kings that brings signs and wonders would heal the people oh God I thank you for the people that will be set a light and sent out God thank Thank you Lord yeah this is a house Mm, this is a house we are the house you are the house that Richard just prayed <laughs> over. You're the house. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Oh. Taff, even when you were just uh, you're you're praying o- over that forgiveness thing that came up, I I felt like significant people tonight. You're going to sleep the first restful sleep you've had in years because you were able to forgive. Yeah. And nightmares and night terrors you're being delivered from. Ooh. Because you're delivered from the torment of unforgiveness. Thank you, God. Yeah. Mm. Amen. God, this can be crazy. I just, I, I didn't. Sorry, back for mm. Rich. I just, I just feel the Lord on you, and I just honor. You. And you're talking about ri- risk, Richie, and risking it all, oh. Richie. I was just watching you prance across the stage and breaking <laughs> down. God. I saw it like when the idols of um, the Philistines would fall down beside the presence of God. I just saw you pushing over idols. God, I just thank you for Richard Gordon. I thank you for the yeah. gift that he oh. is, not just as my friend, Lord, but as an anointed man of God. Yes. Mm. Thank you for a revival that is in his oh. bones, Lord. I pray, God, yeah. for a mark to favor and authority to come bones. even in an increase right now in his oh. life, God. And I pray that you would anoint him to begin to pioneer that. through God oh. with great risk in our environment, putting all his oh. chips, God, in front of you. Lord, I thank you that he's already done that. He's already said, yes, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that there's already a, um, a he's already making a spectacle of himself. You're making a spectacle <laughs> of him. Yeah. But Lord, I do. I pray you would oh. magnify that, Lord. I pray that you would increase, that the eyes yes. of a generation would be turned towards a life laid down, God. Yes, God. I just wow. honor Rich. I honor the leadership on your life. I honor mm. the anointing, the grace. More than anything else, I just honor that low, humble yes, mm. God. Wow, you should come here. We need to pray for you. Come here quickly. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I just and then Kate come here too. <laughs> <laughs> We're just supposed to pray 
Yeah. 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 Holy Spirit, we just thank you. <laughs> thank you. He's standing in the gap, God. He's standing in the gap, one that would be sending messages out that would touch thousands. And I see a creative gift on your life that is way bigger than your role right now. And I see yeah, the Lord right. anointing you as a consultant, as a consultant beyond this role. And I see God saying, Oh, you've humbled yourself in this position, but there's an anointing much bigger than yours. That's why you've been called to an apostolic house. That's why you've been called to an apostolic house, not to pick up a skill or ability, but to pick up this grace of the apostolic because you've called to consult out, 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 out. And there's this fire that rests upon you. Right now, God, we thank you for an anointing that would rest on him. God, you're not just keeping him here, but I do see a something that this will be on your land, but you'll go to, you'll go to, and there'll be, a, a, there'll be an extension of this role, and there'll be this like apostolic going, this consulting that will come. People will come to you and say, what are you doing? I need to learn from that. Thank you, God, for that anointing resting on them right now, God. Thank you, God. Oh, Thank you for strong men. Thank you, Lord, for the enemy sought to bring weakness and fragility to areas in your life as a young boy. The Lord has raised up a strong and a mighty man, yes. strong in God, yes. strong in the Lord. Yes. Holy Spirit, would you anoint him? Yes. You pour out the oil of an anointing God yes. head to side. Holy Spirit, would you put him on like a glove, like you did Jesus? Mm. Lord, yeah. yes. Yeah. yes. Wow. Yeah, and even even as we're we're praying, and Richard said, um, "You're being called out." I, I I believe this is a call to everyone that many of you are being actually you're being called out right now. God's setting you apart. And Chris just had a word about a trumpet call that they were, he was supposed to sound a trumpet for those that are supposed to be here, for those that are supposed to actually be a part of the work that we're building here. And I feel like there's a call going out to many of you and your heart is actually burning inside and you are hungry for the call. And even when, when Richard called uh, this man out, you felt like, oh, I wish he would call me out. And I'm telling you, God's calling you out right now. Just because you weren't called out in the room doesn't mean you're not called out in your room. God knows where you're at. He knows what you're doing. And He knows the call and intention and identity that He has over your life. And we declare it to come forth right now. And we declare fruit to happen. The fruit that you've been investing in deep places, the root system that no one saw is springing forth in fruit right now in Jesus' name. This is Racha, Racha, Racha. Rebecca! <laughs> oh! oh, it's an easy yoke. And when there was a heavy load, we declare in Jesus' name, it's an easy yoke, God. Oh, everything under the anointing, everything under the anointing is actually easy. When He gave us presence, He gave the couplet of rest too. We declare a rest for your husband, a rest for you. I thank you for a fresh grace. Even this little right thing, this window into a possibility of the building, it's about the encounter. God, I ask that you would be so wildly touched, sustained by the manner of heaven which is the joy of the Lord and encounter. I see a sustaining joy, a sustaining joy like manna from heaven that would be given to you and be like, whoa, I just feel the Lord consistently. And the Lord says, in a place where it's almost like, how am I going to survive? God says, watch, I'll give you manna from heaven. I'll give you the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. And there's going to be a strength that comes upon you on the floor. There's going to be the strength that comes upon you. And you're like, oh, things seem a little easier right now. Spirit, we thank you for that fire we're seeing on it right now, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You see your rod being put in your back and it's being strengthened, but it's a flexible yeah. rod. So it's got strength, but it looks like a gummy. Like it just has the ability to flex in any direction, but it has the strength of the strongest metal rod that you can. There is a strength and a flexibility coming to your back, into your heart, into your mind, into everything that you do. There's a strength and flexibility coming. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. 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 Hey, I, I feel like God's, God's, I know this is bold, but I feel like God's called you to this land. Oh, come I feel on. like there is a, a home here and there's a grace here. 
and there's favor here. And I feel that the hand of God is just resting upon you, even you being in the room today. And I see God saying, I'm bringing people from the east and the west. I'm bringing wise men that would travel. And I see as being like one of the Magi, like one of these anointed wise ones that would travel to come. And there would come be on. something of the anointing. It's like a star that brought you here. It's been a long journey, but God says, I've brought you to a place where you'll pick something up of the anointing in this space. It's not about just uh, being part of a house, but it's about being part of the rushing river that's happening at the moment. And I see, I see you in this like river with a bunch of the leaders of the house. I see you rushing in the river and I see God's hand just on you, okay? In the most beautiful way, in the most beautiful way. And there's something on Haley's life. I see you guys being connected. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but I see you guys being connected. Thanks. Filled to glory. Yeah, okay. God's expanding your capacity to be able to carry in this season. He's expanding your capacity to carry more of His glory. It's like a low, low, humble place. But it's a small door into a big kingdom. So God, we just bless the low and humble place, God. Allows it to enter into the greatness of your kingdom, God. God, we just expand your capacity, God, to carry God. To carry you, Lord. I just felt, I just felt uh, angels walk into your room. Uh, in many rooms, angels walking into your room, and they're actually carrying calling. They're carrying anointing, and, and they're they're uh, they're carrying destiny. So many of you who you you don't you don't know what your destiny is. You don't know what your vision, what your purpose is. God is actually releasing that right now. There's an angels that are being sent to those who would inherit eternal life. That's you and I. And they're being sent with missions and assignment. Go grab a pen, a piece of paper, because God is actually downloading new plans, new vision, new destiny, and purpose in Jesus' name. Oh, Holy Spirit. This is, uh, I know cameras are on, but this is prophetic. I see the Lord cultivating not moments, but anointing to be recorded. I see the Lord not cultivating a story, but cultivating a moment that are anointed that He wants to export. And I, I see this uh, like in the on what you're doing, Melody, and what your whole team is doing. I, I see this hunger for the anointing, hunger for, to not export a presentation, but hunger to export the things of the kingdom that would grip the hearts of men and say, I've seen, I've seen excellence out there, but I have not seen an anointing like the fire, like this. And I see God using you, Melody, and I, I believe where you, you've been saying, am I the right person for the role? And I see God saying, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And there's been a back and forth. I see the Lord just saying, I brought you here and I connected you to the hearts of the leaders of this house. And where they wouldn't trust their legacy with, with that story to be told, but that why would they trust it? And God says, I trust you. Yeah. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. And I, I, I believe that the team that will surround you, the people even in this room, I believe God's going to do something on you where you will not be able to settle, not be able to settle simply for that was good. You won't be able to settle, but even if there was messy, but it carried anointing, there'll be something of like a, uh, like Bill talks about the hunting dog that just snuffed it out. And I see God raising up a team of creatives that would increase their pursuit for the anointing of God. Yeah. And that there would be this, almost this dream of how could we export the glory yes. outside? How can we see a people healed as they watch moments? How can we see people that have been far from God lit on fire that they would fall desperately wildly in love with them again how could we inspire church leaders to dream again and there would be something of the anointing bubbling up and I prophesy that your team is going to start experiencing the Lord in an increased way during these times whoops <laughs> oh man yo <laughs> oh, and I just thank you, Jesus, for the house of Bethel. Yeah. yeah. And for a crazy bunch of people 
a crazy bunch of people that came from a mountain town that would believe for something. <laughs> they didn't care what, what people would say about them. They would say, we want God no matter the cost. Yeah. Oh, God, thank you for the crazy mountain men. <laughs> crazy. And God, I pray that you'd anoint a generation, a Gen Z, a Gen Alpha, to be mountain men, to climb a mountain of the Lord and, and ascend a hill yeah. to touch a, like a place of presence, a Zion, a place yeah, of glory. Yeah, mountain God. worship. Mm. The worship. Oh. Yeah, I was uh, talking with Ray Hughes just recently and about uh, some things. And one of the things he said is... is um, Mount Zion, the worship mountain, is the eighth mountain, and all other mountains revolve around that. Wow. And that's what we're wired for, is the worship of the Lord. Wow, say that again, the the Mount Zion. The eighth eighth mountain is actually Mount Zion, and all other mountains revolve around that, Mm. and uh, that that mountain of worship. Is this this phrase that we keep coming in my head, we are not... He didn't redeem us to be workers, but he redeemed us to be worshippers. That's it. Yeah. Woo! Alex, I just love Alex. <laughs> Go team! Yeah.